wanted to give a quick demo of what we're doing in the uh, digital denture realm with Blue Sky Plan. So this will be available within a few months probably. And uh, there's already a lot of the functionality there. It's just a matter of streamlining it and making it more automated. So as you can see, I've got a couple of digital models here, digital edentulous models. You could get these by uh, scanning some casts or comb beam scanning some casts. But in any case, they're already articulated in the proper orientation. And so let me turn a few things off. And the first thing we need to do is we need to define where we're going to put the central incisors. Now, I just did this based on anatomic averages. And so if you look at the outline of the maxillary cast right here, uh, we can know from most of the literature that the anterior uh, teeth, the incisal edge, is going to be 8 millimeters or so anterior to the incisive papilla. And it's going to be on average 6.7 millimeters vertically down from the papilla. So this is just a dummy implant, 6.7 millimeters long. This is an 8 millimeter dummy implant that's giving us that measurement. So now we've defined where uh, the incisors should, in theory, go. Now the next question is, where should the uh, occlusal plane be? Because now we have this cast, and should this thing be going up this way? Should it be going down this way? So again, if you'll think back to your denture literature, uh, you know that the occlusal plane should go about two-thirds of the way up the retromolar pad. So if we turn on a horizontal positioner, we can now orient that horizontal positioner such that it passes through the point we established for incisive uh, edge and then goes distally through the uh, two-thirds of the way up the retromolar pad. So this gives us our occlusal plane. Now, how do we know vertically uh, or midline position? Well, we can import another plane that's 90 degrees to that one. And we need to position that where it's passing directly through the center of the mid uh, incisive papilla and then going distally out the midline or palatal suture. So now we've got the mid, uh, midline defined, we've got the occlusal plane defined, and the only other thing that we're missing is how do we know what size of teeth to put into these arches. And so yet again, if we look at the denture literature, we can find that there is uh, a lot of research showing that the position of the canines, if you take a, a plane right through the distal part of the incisive papilla, the tips of the canines should fall on that line. So now we've defined not only the uh, positioning of the teeth and the occlusal plane of the teeth, but the size of the teeth that we're going to need to be for, uh, to have to be appropriate for this. So let me turn everything on so that you can see it all at once. We've got all of this stuff here, and now we just need to bring the teeth in. And now this is the part, I won't elaborate too much here, um, but suffice to say that this is all going to be automated within Blue Sky Plan. Um, Dr. Marco Tadros and I have worked on this and have really got a nice uh, method of setting these teeth uh, that's going to allow you to conform them to different arch shapes and all of that. It's a little beyond what I'll explain in this video. I just wanted you to see it as a whole. But the idea is that you'll bring the teeth in as a whole unit and be able to position them to these parameters. And then you can only make fine tunements uh, in positioning of things. So you can see we're passing through the uh, cusp tips of the canines. We're following right through the midline right here. And the occlusal plane is set to follow this. OK, so now I can turn off all of these planes. We don't need those at this point. And these teeth are positioned correctly within the arch. Um, the lower teeth, I was always taught, need to sit directly over the ridge for denture stability. And so that automatically, for me, defines where the upper teeth are going to be. Uh, so we've got the right size teeth. We've got them positioned correctly in space. And now we need to make the bases for them. Uh, this is already functional in Blue Sky Plan because you can simply make a so-called surgical guide on each of these models. Press Create Guide, and there are your bases. So here we have these, and all you would do at this point is export these, and you would 3D print that try-in. So you can see here we've got this base, and the base is anatomic. The inside of it fits exactly to the cast. It's not like your traditional wax try-in where they had to block out undercuts in the cast. This engages everything, so you know exactly how well that denture is going to fit at the initial try-in. The teeth are set to this, and again, this is all one piece. 
I don't go to any effort festooning the gingiva onto this because my preference is to come back and just throw on some wax really quick, do your festooning, which is going to make for a more accurate try-in. So this printed denture is now ready for the wax try-in. And again, you can see what that looks like. The teeth are just connected to this and printed as a whole unit. So you print that out, you try it in, hopefully everything is good. If it's not, you've invested nothing but a little time on the software. You can digitally reset those very simply. Assuming it is good, at that point you would go about the processing of the denture, and this was a key component, is to be able to do this completely in-house. So there's a number of ways that I'll, I'll show to do this. You could do it with an Annex Dent Flask, or you could do it with a pour technique. Here I'll show with the Annex Dent Flask. With this, you buy the little flask and the denture gets invested on the flask in a PVS material. This is a putty that's extremely hard, extremely accurate, and uh, it's used for this purpose. So you can actually do a very nice job of processing dentures with this. Once you've done the outer surface, you can now paint this on so it doesn't stick to it. Do the intaglio, and when you break the flask open, now you have this. Pop the denture out, the 3D printed denture, and the beauty of the digital setting process is that there's going to be a mold of teeth that corresponds in real life to the digital teeth that you set in that digital process. So now if you, if you planned these with whatever teeth it was, now you grab that mold of teeth and you take them off and individually pop them back into these slots. You close up the flask, you would inject the acrylic, put it in a pressure pot for 20 minutes. This is all very simple. It could be completely assistant driven. And this is a different case, but processed by the same method. Uh, this was actually a hybrid denture. And so you can see that the acrylic turns out extremely nice, extremely dense. And this process can work very, very well. And so uh, the goal on this is to have something that we can pull off a denture in two to three visits process it completely in-house and essentially the only costs end up being the cards of teeth which can range from two dollars a card up to twenty dollars a card it just depends on how expensive a teeth you want to use and then a little bit of acrylic and a little bit of putty so in my mind this is a maximum if you use cheap teeth this is a maximum uh, ten bucks twelve dollars an arch for a digital denture that's going to have an extremely nice outcome so i hope you enjoy that